This presentation that we're going to be doing is, is a presentation by myself, Derek Hu, and Tammy Schaeffer. And I'm going to start and then Derek will continue and, and uh, Tammy will um, finish off with the conclusion. Um, the, the presentation is on the research that we've done on um, student learning and student experiences of learning at UWC. So this is just um, the structure of our presentation, a bit of context and background, the, the participatory workshop, and then the results of the student surveys and findings and the conclusions and recommendations. Um, we initially did this survey and um, PLA workshop in 2008, and it was really to inform the strategic plan on teaching and learning and the Charter of Graduate Attributes. So we took very seriously what we found in that survey. And part of the strategic plan was that after five years we would redo the survey to see what had changed in terms of teaching and learning and students' experiences of this um, at our institution. We did add a couple more questions on graduate attributes, but otherwise it was more or less the same. So it was really looking at their participation in teaching and learning activities as well as support services that they'd had experiences with of various centres and staff at UWC. Um, so we wanted to see really if their needs have changed or remained the same. And we're going to really be informing our next strategic plan. <laughs> this one's nearly over. We've got the last year of it next year, and we're going to have to think about the next one. Um, we are fortunate in South Africa to be having Vincent Tinto visiting us, and I have um, sent that around. The CHE is bringing him out. And he is really the person who is looking at um, you know, what one needs to do to make students feel welcome and to make them be able to learn at institutions. And I like this um, phrase of his, his access without support is not opportunity. Um, so institutions, he says, don't necessarily intentionally exclude students. Um, but it doesn't mean that it, because they're not intentionally doing that, that, that they are including them as fully valued members um, of the institution and, and that they can be successful. Um, and there has been um, research, um, people like Sharman Wickham um, in our own context and um, Jones et al., have um, said that it's very important for us as lecturers, tutors, peers um, to be involved in students' learning and for students to be involved with each other. I'm sure this came across in Denise's presentation. So we need to look for ways of making this possible. Um, and we we very conscious at our institution of the difficulties people have when coming um, to university in environments which haven't adequately prepared them. Um, we did a participatory learning and action workshop last year, and we, uh, the last time, and we redid it, and we asked the same questions. We said, can you draw or represent the things that you would find conducive to learning? So here you see library, admin, food court, um, enough computers, student rep, a swimming pool. These are the sorts of things that students would have wanted. Um, transport to UWC. Um, and then we also asked them to draw a map of the things that they had that had actually been helpful. There you see the S drive, semi-approachable lecturers. Um, <laughs> the UWC library comes up a lot as being helpful and it's been the only space, actually, that students have to, to work, e-teaching also. Um, this one has S through, you can see it's an EMS student. Um, Office of Student Development is, is represented here. And uh, Golden Key, Family. And then we, um, here the library also features. Um, 
And then we asked them to, to do a simple matrix uh, where they would brainstorm um, with the group what had made it difficult for them as students to have a satisfactory learning experience. And then they had to, to actually uh, rate that. Uh, noisy neighbors, library closes early, curriculum work overload, insufficient note, tutorial su support, delayed feedback, etc. Um, parking has become a problem, never was a problem before. Library noise levels, graduate attributes, I don't know why this is regarded as a problem. Admin, <laughs> living environment, transport. But um, when listening to the discussions that they had, um, these are the themes which recurred. Students asked for more interaction between themselves and lecturers. They also, again, as they did before, complained of problems with administration. They wanted marks to be available more quickly. And in, they wanted HODs to actually intervene when things were going wrong. Um, trained tutors and more interaction, again, with tutors and lecturers. Not just um, the lecturers, you know, telling the tutors what to do and disappearing. More study spaces and computer labs, sports, and ATM facilities, and transport is something that comes up time and again. I'm going to hand over now to Derek. I've exceeded by a minute. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Okay. Uh, I'm a bit half paralyzed without the mouse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that, is that the page yeah. that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, because of the length of the questionnaire and the time constraint for the presentation, I will quickly go through the results of part A, just a general background for the students. I would like to focus on the results on part B, on the students' learning experience and need some good results, some worrying results. And the last part has to do the additional questions that were added in the 2012 survey, some open-ended qualitative questions on the students' overall experience at UWC. Okay, so let me quickly start with the first part on the demographic information. So as you can see from the table, a very high proportion of the survey participants are females. And they are, I think most, half of them are 21 or younger than 21. And in terms of home language, as expected, most of them are English, Afrikaans, courses speaking. Okay. And then you can see about, for both surveys, about one third of them are accepted to study the foundation or extended part of the four year program. And then also, as expected, almost all the students taking part in the survey are full time students. And then the faculty. Okay, unfortunately, for some reasons, we did not receive responses from the law faculty in 2012. So actually, initially, we were a bit worried uh, with the, is, it, is it okay with the 2012 results if we don't have responses from the law faculty in 2012. So we actually analyzed the 2008 data, including and excluding the law faculty students, and the results are quite similar. So I think it is safe to really continue the analysis like that. Okay. <coughs> so they quite drop by 10 percentage points of the students claiming they stay at university residences. Maybe they stay at private residences or okay. they stay close to the campus. Squatting. Okay. It's squatting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, orientation. Okay. So these are the students' experiences before they officially enjoy the lectures. Okay. Orientation, you could some optimistic results, increasing proportion of students in the orientation in the first years, and then also an increasing proportion of students finding this orientation program fairly useful or very useful. And then this is another optimistic outcome, the increasing proportion of students given library orientation, and then they also have quite a high proportion, I think it's close to 80%. They make the library orientation being fairly or very useful. Okay, then some mixed results, <coughs> uh, controversial results about the registration. 
So a lot of, despite the downward trend, there's still quite a high proportion of students complaining about the time spent in queue for the registration, and they grumble the inefficiency in the registration process. The registration staff are unhelpful. There's actually an additional question asking them to give more information, and most of them claim the registration staff are unfriendly or giving some rude remarks, things like that. Okay, now we move on to the critical part, part B, the students' learning uh, experiences and needs. Okay, first of all, how they make use of the writing centre. This is quite worrying, the decreasing proportion of students making use of the services in the writing centre. So what's the reason behind it? Lack of time or they already have too much workload in their studies, etc. We may have more ideas from the results in the forthcoming questions. And then, uh, slight increase of the proportion of students using the services from the CSSS. Okay, and then this is quite interesting. Only twenty percent of the students claim they receive regular help on writing from someone in the faculty. But at the same time, there's a low proportion of students using the writing center. That's a little bit confusing. So, what are the students going to do to improve their writing skills? Self-learning, DIY, or, <laughs> or making use of information on the internet, etc. Okay, let's see if we can find out some answers in the forthcoming analysis. Okay, but this is a very good funding for those who claim they have made use of the services in the writing center. We can see the improvement, the increasing proportion claiming the services of the writing center really improve their writing. A fair amount, or even a lot, doubling of the proportion. Okay, and then uh, also the students find the services in the CSSS quite helpful or very helpful. Okay. Experience in the lecture venues. Okay, in general, students feel quite comfortable in the lecture theatres. Okay, this is quite an interesting question. Do the students complain the disruption from their fellow students? Okay, I don't know how they define disruption. Or is it noise or whatever? Let's. Look at more information. There's an open-ended question added in the 2012 survey. Give more information or explanation about the level of comfort of the classroom. And they could give more than one answer. Okay. So in general, it's quite a high proportion of the students claim the family is comfortable. But these are the three worrying findings. Maybe this is the cause of the disruption. Family is too small, overcrowded. Maybe you talk softly to your fellow students. You don't realize you are disturbing your fellow classmates. The ventilation, poor air conditioning, and then some students use this word seriously. They say that a whole lecture theater and are no longer suitable for teaching purposes. Okay. Okay. Experience for lecturers. Okay. Um, in general, uh, the students claim the first year's lecturers explain the course outline objectives quite well, and then the issue of plagiarism also very well and now okay consultation hours that seems to be a very good funding okay the lecturers do have consultation hours I think this is required on the course outline but this is the real picture okay, <laughs> okay. in 2008 if you add up the per percentage it's one third so although it drops to like 20% in 2012 but it still means should I say one out of five or 20% probability Let's say in 2012, there is a 20% probability that the students knock on the doors of the lecturers and they are not around. And this probability was one third in 2008, so that's quite worrying. Okay, more about experience with lecturers. Okay, I want to start with this one. In general, the students, they could feel that the lecturers, sorry the, about the typing errors, uh, the confidence of lecturers. In general, you can add up the percentages, it exceeds 80% in both surveys, that in general they feel that the lecturers are quite good, quite competent, but at the same time they gave some <coughs> worrying answers. For instance, look at the high proportion of students claiming it's not sometimes hard to understand the lectures. What are the reasons? We will have some ideas later, and I'll show you some figures and other tables. Okay. Some students find the lecture not that interesting, I think about one third here. Okay. Despite the feeling that they know that the lecturers are quite competent. Okay. 
how often do they attend lectures? Okay, it's a subjective question. So let's see if the students answer honestly. They say they always or fairly regularly attend it. Okay. Do the lectures encourage students to question things critically? In general, the outcome is quite good. This is quite a good result. Increasing proportion of students they feel that the lecturers care about their progress. Okay, now this is the worrying finding about the evaluation exercise. I think at the end of the semester, students are given, given a form to fill in some questions about the quality of the lecturers and the courses. You can see even in 2012, about 20% of the students claimed they were not asked to do such an exercise. Okay. And then for those who did such an exercise, look at the high proportion. A lot of students do not think this evaluation would lead to improvement in teaching and learning. So is it just a paperwork exercise and it is dumped into the bookshelf of the offices? Okay, should, maybe we should, yeah, let's think about that. Okay. Okay. And then feedback, this is another worrying finding. Okay, some students will come grumble, they hardly receive feedback okay. on the marks or the other general feedback, other high proportion say no, or sometimes. Okay, and then this is the new question added, the, the graduate attributes story that was introduced in around 2010 and 2011, and this is the very worrying finding. About 55%, more than half of the students, have no or fake idea about graduate attributes. Remember, the, the aim of the graduate attributes is to align these attributes with the learning outcome and the assessment parts. Okay, a bit more results. About the required reading, some students actually answer quite honestly. They say too much reading and they would not read all the readings. Maybe that is one of the reasons they would not have the time to make use of the services in the writing center, etc. <laughs> that could be, okay. And then some, a few questions about the technologically related issues. Okay, more use of e-teaching. And then the students actually quite often use computer to do their assignments. So I think these results are expected. And then students prefer more use of technology at the university. So these findings are quite as expected. Okay, now experience of coursework activities. Okay. Um, I want to focus on these two, about the group work. Okay. So quite a high proportion of students claim there is group work given. But at the same time, look at this proportion. Especially in 2012, half of the students, they say they do not enjoy the group work. Does it have to do with the fact that uh, maybe the lecturers are not aware of the graduate attributes, that maybe they give the assignments in the wrong nature, should I say, that it might not be appropriate to give a group project? So it might have something to do with the graduate attributes issue or the way the assessment tasks are being set up. Okay. And then uh, a few more worrying findings. Okay. Uh, some, uh, about 20% of the students say they don't quite have a clear idea of what is expected in their courses. And then some students also claim they don't quite see the relevance of the topics they are taught. Okay. And then this proportion, I wish it would be a bit higher. Only one third of the students claim that the studies broaden their understanding of life. Okay. And then just a few more questions. Other factors affecting the learning? Okay, look at the top one. This is quite important. More than 90% of the students claim that university study is very different to high school studies. And then some students struggle to they struggle a little bit, but then they add that maybe because they make use of the orientation session, the library orientation, etc., that I mentioned right at the beginning. Okay. And then about to this one. Okay. Other factors affecting the learning. Okay. Uh, some students, there's actually quite a high proportion, about 40%, they, they are quite affected by the lack of personal resources that affect their studies. You might wonder what are these constraints? That means they figure coming soon. And then for those who stay at residences, this is the problem. A lot of, pro a lot of students, they say it's difficult to study. And if I remember correctly, the major reason is they complain the noise from their fellow roommates in the residence. Okay. And then the traveling. <coughs> so let me go back to the question I haven't answered. What are the constraints, personal resources constraints, affecting their teaching and learning? So this is the 
uh, additional question added in 2012. And students can give more than one answers, okay? And then the three commonly given answers are food, hunger, okay? We're feeling it now, okay? Hopefully not. Okay. Transport, costly and time-consuming transport, okay? Some students would give good answers. They say, I have the resources. It's fine, something like that. Okay, about the bursary, half of the students receive bursaries or financial aid, okay? But at the same time, for those who receive financial aid, it's quite a high proportion of satisfied. And these are the major reasons. The bursary is not sufficient to finance the full amount of study, or the bursary money arrives late. It is typical in my department that the students only pay their studies fees like May or June. They're waiting for the bursary. Okay, overall experience. Okay, this is the last part. Okay, it has to do with the new questions added in the 2012 survey. So overall, I think some good, in general, good outcomes. Increasing proportion of students, they claim they made the right decision to come to UWC, and UWC has met their expectations. Okay, then students are asked to give more qualitative information. So this is the additional question added in 2012. And once again, students can give more than one answer. And these are the commonly given reasons, okay? high quality education is offered. And I want to highlight that a lot of students come from dentistry. So they give two answers. They say UWC is the best university in South Africa in dentistry. And the quality of education is good. So I find that the dentistry students always give these two answers at the same time. Okay. For those who claim they've made a wrong decision to come to UWC, this is the commonly given reason. They prefer yeah. to study elsewhere but not accept it. Okay. Okay. Just one or two more slides. Okay. About uh, the university meeting, the explanation. They are asked to give the reasons. So these are the commonly given reasons. High, once again, high quality education is offered. Committed, helpful lecturers, a comfortable environment. Okay. okay. What if they say the university has not met the expectations, and then once again, this is the favorite reason. This organized administration, poor facilities, I think it has to do with the lecturing facilities that I mentioned previously. And then this is the last question. Okay. What are the other issues we would like to draw the students? The students would like to draw UWC attention. So, teaching and learning. so I think it has to do with my previous comment about that in general, the students think the lecturers are competent, yet they grumble about certain things. And we can see answers here. Some of them mention about the unclear English accent of the lecturers. I think the polite, rude, inapproachable attitude of laziness or things like that, or are they spending too much time on research or not enough time on teaching, or etc. Better computer facilities, parking space, I think Vivian show a picture previously mentioned that this organized administration, it happens many times. Okay. Better curriculum advice, and then there is always timetable, whatever timetable clash happens. Double booking of the same lecture venue. There should be better test assignment schedule, and better tutors are needed. Okay, so I'm done with my part. Thanks, Dave. Okay, I think as you can see, there are quite a huge amount of findings, and I mean, there's a lot we could say about the comparison between the two, five, you know, the one done in 2008 and now what we've recently done. But this, so I've got a very short time to summarise quite a lot of findings, and so it's going to be quite brief. Um, in general, I mean, I, I think what you can see from both the more qualitative findings and the quantitative findings is students felt that they, they I mean, I think this is very positive that they had made the right choice to study at UWC, even though more than 20% said that they're only studying at UWC because they were rejected elsewhere. Um, but also that UWC has met the expectations and that, that there are some negatives in their recommendations about what lecturers need to do, but for the most part there is a sense that lecturers are competent. And I think what's very encouraging is that if you look at most of the items where there were differences between 2008 and 2012, at the quantitative level, the, the more negatives have gone down and the more positives have gone up. And I think that that is encouraging and does show that we have had some impact with respect to the teaching and learning strategy over the last five years. 
and I think we should acknowledge that even though it's very evident there's still lots and lots of challenges that we need to engage with. Um, to focus on the, the negatives, I think the main problems that seem to be affecting students' learning, and these are really just more the kind of teaching and learning components, because as you can also see, there are quite a lot of sort of campus challenges like transport, like admin, which are not about what we're doing as lecturers and about the teaching and learning framework. But just to highlight some of the things where we can impact on at a teaching and learning level, lecturers' accessibility and engagement with students seems to be quite a key challenge still. So lecturers are, are not available, they put up their consultation times and I, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because I I'm definitely um, have, have done this myself quite frequently and then they're not available during that consultation time. Something comes up, going off to a, and you forget and, and whatever. But it's also about the engagement in the day-to-day, -day, in the actual teaching environment. Um, the, the fact that it's hard to understand students Students talk about English and accent, but I think it's, it's more than that. And I think if we look qualitatively, it's about accessibility of engagement, how lecturers are engaging the students. And it links perhaps to some of those items around what happens in the classroom and whether group work works or not. Why is group work not working? What kinds of exercise and activities are we using? An interesting lecture. So there are things we could be doing better. Um, insufficient, irregular feedback. So the whole aspect around assessment comes up as a, not, still an area of challenge. We are assessing students, but are we giving feedback in order to improve and to, to ensure that students are, in fact, benefiting from that assessment? Evaluation of our own modules and courses seems to be a, a key area of challenge, and we are working on that at the moment in the teaching and learning group, the deputy deans of teaching and learning and the teaching and learning specialists. Are we evaluating my modules in the first place, and then what are we doing with that? And it seems clear that students don't believe that we actually are implementing any of the, the feedback that they're giving us with our evaluation. So they get a sense that evaluations are just put away in the cupboard. They're done because they need to be done. So that's something we need to look at. The fact that students um, are not aware or seem to be vaguely aware of what graduate attributes are, it seems to be a key challenge for us um, because that's something that is part of our teaching and learning strategy and, our, and this gives us some recommendations for what we need to be doing. Why do students not even really know what these things are and how they, they, how they link to their teaching and learning? Um, and the, the item that, there's, that students still feel there's a big gap and this is one of the items, interestingly enough, I don't know if it's significant <coughs> or it could tell us, but we, in fact it, it has increased for the negative more students feel that there's a gap between high school study and university study. And that is something which links to epistemological access and which clearly we need to begin to address. So epistemological access, access students having the appropriate understanding skills, um, academic literacies to engage with university level study still is a big challenge for us at UWC. So I think we need to identify key areas and generate more support in terms of teaching and learning, which means that as teachers and lecturers, we need to be critically reflecting more on how we integrate in academic and other literacies that will meet this gap, particularly at the undergraduate level, the first year level in particular, um, so that we adequately um, ensuring that we undermine the challenges for epistemological access for our students who do remain some of the most at disadvantaged students in South Africa. We know that statistically that UWC still represents very poor, very disadvantaged students. Um, since this is one of our key goals in our strategy for teaching and learning, we obviously need to focus more on this in, in future interventions for both professionalizing teaching for staff and for what we're doing with students, student learning initiatives. And I was interested um, to hear from one of the presenters at a portfolio workshop the other day um, that one of the key things about doing portfolios as staff is that it actually is, it assists us as lecturers in becoming more reflective and gaining confidence as teachers. So there are many strategies we could be using um, to further um, integrate, ensure that lecturers are adequately engaging with the strategic goals with 
um, graduate attributes, for example. And that will, in fact, reflecting on your own work, allows one to improve and um, strengthen our own teaching. So finally, um, we have, um, it's evident that there are continued problems around key areas of teaching and learning, which foregrounds areas of gap in meeting our strategic goals that we set for ourselves in the last five years. And these will obviously have implications for our next um, institutional operational plan and what we say and what we um, commit ourselves to doing in our next strategic goals for teaching and learning for the next five years. Some of the key things which seem to come out of what we've seen in this survey and in relation to the last are that we need to work harder at graduate <coughs> attributes, making sure they are in fact embedded in our curriculum and that they're aligned through the different components of our, our curriculum. And clearly more work with staff on doing this needs to happen. And we need to seek novel ways. And I would say one of the key ways which I've, I'm beginning to realize is by getting staff to engage more critically with their own teaching and learning, to reflect on it. And as the imperative for the portfolio, developing our own teaching portfolios is there and has been set up as a key and strategic goal as well, that might be one area in which we can facilitate staff being more in touch and embedding um, such things into their, and aligning their, their curriculum. Assessments of, of courses and how that's fed back and evaluations of courses seems to be a key area which we are already working on but clearly need to do more work. Um, and lecturers' accessibility, not just physical, but how they make themselves accessible to students. And I think that also links with the, the first point. Um, and finally, um, and looking at all of those points, are focusing more on methodology, how we teach um, the methodologies we use, our philosophies of teaching. Um, needs to, to have, happen more and we need to continue to mobilize around doing the kinds of things that Denise was talking about, inclusive education, that Viv um, has a long time been talking about at UWC and written and there's, there's an increasing scholarship of teaching and learning here at this institution more broadly and globally um, but we need to, to continue to mobilize around ensuring that our teaching really is student-centered, that it is more active and participatory, that it is engaging so that students are not finding it boring and interested, and that it is innovating. Um, there's a lot more we could say about these surveys, but that's the beginning. Thank you.